Hello viewers, for DIYers here with another tutorial video for everyone. In this particular video here, I'll be doing a demonstration of how to install a grill mounted light bar. This was a two part installation guide. If you missed the previous video on how to make the custom mount, be sure to check that out. The link for that will be included in the description below. Finishing up the wiring, Oxbean does provide an excellent ready to use wiring kit. However, for this tutorial, I wanted to show everyone how this can be done from scratch. For this, I will need a switch to control the light. Sometimes you can also use a switch from the fog lights if your vehicle is pre-wired but doesn't have the actual fog lights installed. This light does have a higher draw so a relay will be needed to control the higher amperage circuit and the switch will operate on the low amperage side. Normally I'm not a fan of regular spade connectors. Personally I don't think they have a clean look, don't match the vehicle's wiring and aren't protected from the moisture or water. I picked these up from bulk on eBay much cheaper than purchasing just a couple locally. They are known as a water or weatherproof electrical connector. They have seals on both the wires and within the connector. Also available in a variety of sizes for single, two, four, six, etc. wire applications and match the factory vehicle's wiring. You will need special crimpers for these. I am using crimpers from Mac Tools and have produced a review video on these particular crimpers in the past. Cut the wires to length and strip the casing, only a small amount. Too much conductor exposed will cause fitment issues for the contacts. Install the seals first. Twist the conductor. And install the contacts, then pinch them over the rubber seal. Use the correct jaws in the crimper and crimp the connection. Once done crimping, give them a final pull test to ensure everything is correct. Install them in the case. Now install the male connector on the other side of the wires. The plastic housing is only the male portion. The contacts within the connector, however, are the female portion. The power side will have the female contacts, so if the light switch is disconnected, there will be minimal risk for the connection shortened out if accidentally switched on. I already know the light draws 30 amps, and based on how long the wire is, this will determine what gauge wire is needed to be used. A wire gauge chart is needed to determine what size wire is required. Undersizing wire will give you a voltage drop and even worse cause excessive heat either melting the wire or creating a fire. For this I am using 12 gauge wire. Technically I can get away with 14 gauge but it's better to be safe. The lower the number of gauge the thicker the wire and the higher amperage it's able to handle. Before I cut the wire to length I need to set up my secondary fuse box location along with the relay. Inline fuses can be used but for something a little different and room for expansion, I'm using an aftermarket fuse box. The stock fuse box can be used if you wish, but can be a bit work intensive to disassemble and they don't always have the room for expansion. I would have liked to mount this on the side of the inner fender or on the firewall, but most of that space is taken up by other accessories. I found a bracket just above the fender liner to mount it too. I purchased this fuse box off eBay as well. I've also added an extra hole for the relay to keep it in the same location. If you have a larger setup with multiple relays powering various lights, you may want to consider a custom made separate bracket to keep everything organized. Fuses are numbered 1 to 4. They have an LED light, main power comes in from the bottom post, and then divides off to the spade connectors. This is a 5 pin generic relay. I tried to find a 4 pin, but none were available locally. So this has two circuits inside. One is normally open and the other one is normally closed. We want the circuit that is normally open, so when the electromagnetic coil is activated, this will close the contacts, activating the lighting circuit. Making the main power wire coming from the battery to the fuse box, for this I'm using only a 12 gauge wire, but if you are powering multiple lights, you will need to have a much heavier gauge wire, otherwise this main wire will overheat and become a hazard. To keep everything tidy, I am removing the plastic casing on the crimp connectors. I'm using side cutters to pinch the casing which should stretch it enough to remove. These just simply pull off. The plastic sleeve doesn't always look good when crimped afterwards and they're too bulky. So I'm using adhesive filled shrink tube instead. If you can push the heat shrink further onto the connection, it should close up and prevent the moisture from getting into the connection. For the relay, the extra wire was kind of bugging me and the generic coloring wasn't also to my liking. So I removed the contacts. I'll alter the contacts to my preference and try to keep the color coding as close as possible. I just stuck a small drill bit inside the contact which will release the retaining clip and the pigtail can be removed. 
The bracket for the relay and fuse box has been installed into place. I'll give you a peek after. Cut the wires to size which comes from the light bar. The red or positive wire connects to the relay and the black or ground will connect to the factory ground location on the inner fender which I'll show you in a moment. Power is constant to the coil so I am setting up a different circuit than what most use. The ground will be the switching wire for this setup. This keeps the power out of the cab and less wiring is needed to be ran inside the truck. A switch ground is used on some European vehicles and was also used on older North American vehicles. Next I will be making a wide wire which supplies power to the light on the switching side of the relay and the other which will provide power to the lower amperage side to control the coil. If you are wondering how to solder I do have an ultimate guide which I'll include a link in the description below. Again I will be using adhesive filled shrink tube. The other side gets a spade connector, unfortunately no shrink tube due to the type of connector and it can't remain bare as it's a power wire. I will include a full wiring diagram at the end of the video. At this moment I'll slowly fill in the wiring diagram so you know which wire goes where. Here's the first wire. For protective casing there's a few different options. One is heat shrink which I'll be using. Next is a rubber casing. And finally we have plastic casing with a slit down the side to pop the wire into place similar to what is found on vehicles. For the heat shrink pick the correct size. This particular style I'm using here is 3 to 1 shrink ratio and does not have an adhesive. Adhesive isn't required for this situation as this is only for added protection on existing casing and it is aesthetically clean. Inserting multiple wires into the casing can be tough. This is only a short run, so I can push them through side by side. For longer runs, you can insert one wire or a string, then use that as a guide to pull the wires through together. Use a heat gun to shrink the tube afterwards. You'll be left with something such as this. The relay pigtail was added. This goes onto the switching side of the relay, receives power from the fuse box. The black wire, which has an eye terminal that connects to the body ground time for installing this wire. The wire runs behind the grill, around the plastic diffuser, behind the headlight, through the bulb cutout in the front end frame, in front of the battery, along the main harness, and to the fuse box location. A little test to ensure everything is working correctly, I've grounded out the coil side as the relay has a constant power. A wire which was ran inside the cab, which I'll show you in a moment. To install a switch, some disassembly of the dashboard is needed. Oxbeam does supply a switch which doesn't need any holes drilled and only uses double face tape. So if you're uncomfortable with drilling interior components or unsure how to disassemble, this is certainly an excellent route. For this particular truck I do have to remove the knee panel under the steering column, then remove the radio bezel, and finally I can remove the trim around the gauge cluster. The switch will be installed in the black trim around the gauge cluster. I just need to ensure there is enough room in behind the panel for the switch. For the wire, I only need to run one into the cab, and that wire will be grounded out somewhere underneath the dashboard where there is a sufficient ground source. To give you a peek of how the wires were ran, you can see the entrance through the firewall where I used a step drill to make the hole. Regular drill bits tend to leave a burr in sheet metal, whereas a step drill cuts a clean hole. After that, I used a rubber grommet in the hole to prevent the wire from rubbing on bare metal. The opposite side of the switch wire has to be grounded out to the body using an eye terminal same as what I've made before. I've already fed a rubber hose through where the wires will be running through the dash for the switch. Both wires will come through around the stock location where the existing headlight wires are ran. Tape up the two wires and then pull them through. These wires will also get a waterproof connector so the switch can easily be disconnected when the dashboard is disassembled. The switch will get a connector as well with a short pigtail and the wire is soldered to the terminals, which is sealed up using shrink tube afterwards. Drilling the hole in the dashboard can be a little challenging if you don't have a larger size drill bit for the switch. I used a wood spur bit, cover the surface in tape as protection, and then cut the hole. The spur bit does a clean cut in the plastic. Unfortunately, it does need to be slightly larger, so I used an abrasive bit to open it up slightly. Reassemble the dashboard and install the switch, which just snaps into the hole. I purchased these switches off eBay too, bought them in bulk. The main power wire, I left that to the last. The battery terminal clamp has tangs on the side that hold the bolt into place. I bent those tangs back, popped the bolt out, and inserted the main wire which provides power to the fuse box. 
Some vehicles do have a main power bar to tap off, either under the hood, in the cabin, or in the trunk space. This does not, so instead, the battery was the main hookup. The relay wires can be inserted back into the plug casing. They simply snap back into place. Once everything has been finalized, use some small zip ties to tie the new wiring so it doesn't interfere with anything and has a clean look. A close-up of the light bar with a custom-made mounting bracket. I'll throw up some final photos on Facebook, so be sure to check those out. Here's the finalized wiring under the hood. You can see the electrical connector behind the headlight for the light bar. The wiring continues above the factory wiring and goes to the body ground. Next is a bracket for both the relay and new fuse box location. Under the dash, where the wire runs from the relay to the switch, and then from the switch to the body ground. The switch. And finally the main power wire that supplies power to the fuse box. The final wiring diagram for this particular setup. As an alternative, we can use a switched power, which tends to be more common. If you do have more questions on light wiring setups, I may produce a separate video specifically for that. At last, the final light bar test. If you are looking for a review on this particular light bar, I do have an in-depth video, which I'll include in the description below. This is just a quick clip for strictly this video, and certainly does not show the accuracy of the performance of this particular light bar. This light bar is much brighter than compared to the stock lights, and will illuminate a larger area, both in length and width. So this concludes the rest of my video. If you have any comments, please feel free to post them below. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for future tutorial videos. Thank you for watching.